I had a request in the comments uh, to show how to reassemble, reinstall the distributor on a fresh engine. When you start, when you go to install the distributor, you really want to have the the rotor installed. And I used a new rotor. Uh, the distributor has a. a let me do it this way. The rotor has a, a slot in it on one side, like so. That lines up with tab on the on the uh, shaft, so that this piece can. Let's try to get right here. So that piece lines up like so and drops on. Because when you get this together on the engine, you want that rotor to give you an orientation as to which way the distributor goes in. Okay. Now before I get in the engine compartment, the goal when you install the distributor on the, on the engine is, in principle, there's no specific position this has to be in relative to the world. And that sounds odd, but when you install it, you need to have number one, that's the best way to do it, number one cylinder at top dead center, or in my case, I, rather than using top dead center, I line up the timing mark where it's going to be, which is six degrees advanced. As long as that timing mark is at six degrees advanced, you install the distributor. When you're finished, what you need to have is you want the distributor lined up so that the, the magnetic pulse, ready to fire, for number one, so feel it, it's right there, then this tab on the rotor needs to point at the number one terminal on the distributor cap. And so, as long as you're pointing at number one, you could install the distributor this way, you could install the distributor that way, just remember the key thing when you're doing it is that the distributor should be triggered and this should be pointing to the correct spark plug wire which is number one. Now, that said, the important thing, the next important thing is that it really isn't just random. I'm just from a physics standpoint, the goal is to trigger the spark and have it pointing at the right wire. In reality, when you go to set this distributor into the car, into the engine, and you, and you set the cap on top, the, the wires all have to connect. So on this car, let me turn this, on, on my car, this set of terminals has to point to the driver's side, to the left-hand side of the car, so that the wiring harness matches. If I turned it around the other way, the wiring harnesses wouldn't line up. Secondly is you have a pattern of spark plug wires, and the factory wires are made to line up in a certain sequence. And again, if you turn the distributor 90 degrees, you won't have enough slack in the wires. So in this case, on this car, and I checked this when it came, came out, it, it always helps if you can do things on when you're taking it apart. But if you're doing a fresh build and you've never had it before, understand where the wires are, understand where the harnesses are, and roughly where you need to line it up. That, that'll be the most important part. Then once you know where it needs to be, we'll go into the engine compartment we're going to place this down in. This is a helical gear, so as you set it down in, let me set this aside. So as you set this down in with this helical gear, the rotor is going to want to turn, and normally it's clockwise as you're looking down. 
So as you drop it in, the rotor's going to turn, and then it'll drop right into the engine. Now, the challenge is that on the bottom, you have a, a pin in the distributor that has to line up with a slot in the oil pump. And many times as we drop it in, you won't line up with that slot in the oil pump, and you'll have to pull the distributor back out. And you can use this. You can use a screwdriver if you like. Uh, personally, uh, my preference is to use my my oil pump um, pre lube tool, which has that same slot as the bottom of the distributor has, or the same pin. And what you can do is drop that in and rotate it just a little bit to move the oil pump. And then you go back in and drop the distributor back in, and it's a little bit of trial and error until you get it where it needs to be. Last thing, um, don't forget to put um, a fresh gasket on the bottom. Like so. A gasket goes between the distributor and the intake manifold and make sure it doesn't leak. Now, I'm going to I'm going to rearrange the camera and move and move us to the engine compartment and try to drop this dude in and get it lined up. All right. Now, just for first steps, this is a picture of the opening in the manifold where the distributor is going to go. Here's the top. Give me a better shot. Okay. Um, this is the clamp that will clamp the distributor down. At this stage, you do want to make sure that the bolt is loose, that it's installed, and this slides back and forth. So you want to, you want to have the bolt started, and you want to have it retracted so that the distributor can go all the way in and set. Now, you'll see some blue tape on here. Because I've had this apart before, I, I checked where the rotor was pointing when I pulled the engine back apart. And that line down the center, this guy right here, is roughly where the rotor was pointing. I could take a screwdriver across the rotor and extend it. And so at top dead center, or six degrees, either way, um, I knew where the rotor was oriented, and so that'll be my target going back together. And there's also even a piece of blue tape on the back side um, of, the, of the plenum where I marked it. Now, again, if you're, if you're coming at this blind and you're doing this where you haven't had a chance to write those things down, then the main thing is what I said about wiring harnesses. Here are the connectors for the for the distributor and I know where the wires have to come because they're already laid out and my shortest wires are the ones that go down uh, down the back of the engine behind behind the block and they constrain it so the distributor can move a little bit but I know that Pointing it in basically square to the world and out the front is the way to go. So that's where, that's that part of prep. Now on the other side, here's my, my uh, crankshaft balancer, and you see white paint marks. Now something I've learned over the years is it helps, one, to have white paint to be able to read the marks with a timing light more easily, and secondly, You'll see there are additional marks on the balancer. Um, better. What I did was marked the main point. The main mark on the balancer is the wide one. And it's wide because it it's, uh, has a dark line through the center, which is the, the main mark. Then you'll see what I did was measured on the balancer every 10 degrees. So you'll see a line with one dot a line with two dots, a line with three dots, and those aren't necessarily essential, 
But when you're doing diagnostics on the engine, sometimes you'd like to know how far the system is advancing the timing. And you've only got about 12 degrees on the balancer, on the timing mark, before you run out. So by using, by measuring and putting some additional reference points, I learned this back on mechanical distributors where what you'd like to do on the mechanical is to you know, check the advance, mechanical advance curve or the vacuum advance. Uh, having those marks that you could check with a timing light while you revved the engine up was actually pretty helpful at times. So Now, before I get ahead of myself too far, fresh engine, and you can see down down there that I have my marks on, you know, my marks are lined up. I've got the I've got the engine sitting at six degrees. What I didn't mention a moment ago was to put in the distributor, you need to be sure that the number one cylinder is up on compression at top dead center or firing at six degrees. And in order to do that, that's a whole complex thing if you're not careful. So the way you can tell is when the front cover is off the engine, you can look at the camshaft timing marks. If you have a valve cover off the engine, you can look at the valves and the number one needs, both valves should be closed and seated. If you don't know that, then it gets more complicated. You have to make sure because the, the the timing mark for number one will come to top dead center on the compression stroke and on the exhaust stroke and if you time it for the exhaust stroke the engine will never run. So again, make sure number one is up on compression. The best way is while well, you got the, t the timing cover off or the valve cover off to make sure that the valves are closed and it's timed for compression. If you put the engine together and it's all buttoned up then you have fewer options. What you probably need to do then is pull all the spark plugs out so that it's easier to turn and then you need to roll the engine over with a wrench and on this one with the tight engine compartment that's hard to do um, and you can use there's a, a whistle tool you can get or you can use a compression tester even and make sure that number one is coming up to top dead center on compression and then, when, it's, when you know it's on compression, set your timing mark so it lines up, and then we'll go back and install the distributor. Okay, so I'm going to drop the, engine, the distributor in here. I know that the rotor needs to be roughly forward. I'm going to drop this guy down in. It's a little bit tricky to sneak it through. Okay. I also know that that black connection you see right in the front needs to face forward on this car because I have lined up the cap and the distributor and I know that's where it needs to go. So we, we also know that it needs to point to number one on the cap. I've got my reference mark here to cheat a little bit of where it needs to be when it's all the way in. So right now, in order for it to go right, the rotor needs to be to that side of my mark because it will rotate clockwise as I go down in. So right now, the distributor's sitting there. I'm going to wiggle it down in. Oop, and it went too far. So at this point, you can kind of see, see the rotor's not pointing at my mark, and I know that my mark lines up with the number one terminal in the cap. So, what I'm going to do is rotate the rotor backwards and lift the distributor up until I go one tooth over and then I'm going to try to come back down again. And it won't go. Sorry for the shaking, but see, I'm a little bit too far upstream. You can't see it because it's hidden, but the oil pump drive must be off just a little bit. 
because it doesn't want to drop in. It actually dropped in one notch too far over. So what I need to do is I need to move, I'm going to pull the distributor back and we're going to move the oil pump just a little bit here. I need to move that oil pump a little bit. We're going to drop the adapter in. I like using the adapter because I know it's going to eventually engage with the pump. You do need to be a little careful that you don't find some odd way to drop it into the engine. But I'm just going to turn the pump back a little ways. Not far, but just a little bit. And we're going to try this again. This is a trial and error kind of thing. Alright, let's try dropping this guy in there again. Now that I've moved the oil pump, we're going to try this again. Ooh, I think it went. I think it went that time. So the rotor's pointing almost exactly forward. Well, in this case, even though the rotor seems like it's pointing at my mark, you can't see it very well because there's so much in the way. But the distributor is not all the way down against the, the intake manifold. So I'm going to lift this guy out and turn the oil pump just a little bit more so I can go over one more tooth. I'm just going to turn the pump back a little ways. Let's try this one again. Still not drops all the way down. Still not all the way down. Let's try this again. Let's boom there. Well, it's taken me about four tries, and I think I finally got it down in there. Let's get a look at the bottom here. Looks like it's down. Looks like it's down on the bottom. Set the camera down a second. Get a, get a light in there. Yes, she's down on the bottom now. This time I got her down in all the way. And it's pointing at my marks. Alright, now for my method to try to line this up, I think it's pretty doggone close. But what I what I do, watch the rotor. And if you rotate the distributor back and then you go forward with it, you see the see the rotor pop right there? I get this wire out of the way. So if you rotate it forward, you'll see it, see the rotor kind of jump against the resistance. You're going to hit a point here. Where the rotor wants to jump, Oop, right there. And that's right about where she should be. And if I go in with my caliper, it's a little wide. Yeah. Let's try this again. Right about there. Yeah, that's about right. 
Okay. Recognizing that I'm having a little fun getting the camera pointed in the right direction, but right now the distributor's in, rotor's pointed where I want. There's a connection back here that you have to pick up for the back side of the distributor. It's this four pin four pin connection. And snap that guy in like so. And then it can kind of tuck out of the way. This one goes to the distributor cap. And I'm just going to verify one more time that the rotor lines up properly. Because she, she lines right up with my mark. Right there. That's pretty doggone close. And then, I'm going to get the distributor cap. I'll roll the spark plug wires over too. See, the number one cylinder is marked on the cap. You can see the 8 and then the 1. The 1 is the terminal that we want it to aim at. So as we go together here, I need to just make sure that as this cap drops in, right here, that we're pointing at the number one terminal. I'll put the cap on here. When you lock the cap down, if you hadn't noticed, it's, um, so there's the rotor, and it's pointing at my marks, and it's really hard to see with all these angles, but when you get her down in there, and the cap locks in where it belongs, what you'll see is this is the number one terminal for the number one plug, and it's lined up it's lined up right there with the mark and which which means I ought to be in the right spot okay then we need to use a you need to use a quarter inch to run down the screws on the cap I didn't tighten it. I'm going to leave it loose for the moment. Because I'm going to come back and use the timing light. Okay, the car's powered up just so I got the ignition system to run. got my timing light connected to number one spark plug wire and I've got gloves on to try to make sure I don't get bit off the distributor and I'm not going to grab the plug wires but I'm going to trigger the spark plug uh, the uh, timing light and let's see if we can get a spark see that see the strobe which is even triggering the fuel injectors, it sounds like. So I'm walking back and forth across. I hit it right there. That position of the distributor is about right, because it's firing the timing light with the engine sitting at six degrees and if anything I'm going to go just a skosh it's clockwise rotation so I'm going to go upstream just a little bit and advance this just a hair and then I'm going to lock it down there and we'll go for cam break in with that set like that even though I said I locked it down with the timing light a moment ago I did go back to this method, measure from a fixed point on the housing to the fuel rail, and compare the two to make sure that they're similar. 
And when I'm done, I always go a little bit further to the counterclockwise, a little bit extra advanced, because this method always seems to be a little bit retarded when I'm done. But that's how I got through the first cam break in, and it worked pretty well. Uh, I expect uh, it should work again for me until I can get a timing light on it after the next cam break in.